Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jessica Mariño, and today I would like to start my presentation showing you my results from the last year from the famous test case cylinder with flap. As you can see, the red lines is my results, and the other lines the reference. Even though I spent a lot of time to change everything in my parameters and my configuration files, my results always bar, uh, was far away from the reference results. Until I decide to change my idea, to change my adapters, and begin again. And with this change, my results was modified, and now these are my results. This positive effect in my results is the reason that I am here, because I want to share with you some experience that I learned during the process, and maybe show you an efficient way to build FSI precise adapter and improve your FSI simulations. In this work, I am together with Elena Kolb, and we work in the group of Professor Michael Schäfer in the Technical University of Darmstadt. Today, I am going to uh, speak two parts. In the first part, I am going to introduce you the problem that we have with uh, our FSI coupling, and after that, what is the way to build an adapter. Let's uh, start. We work in the FAMB Institute. We are focused in modeling multiphysics, for example, the combination with turbulent flows and air acoustics, or maybe with multiphase flows. All these applications are implementing most of them in FASTES. FASTES is our in-house solver. It's a 3D CFD solver written in Fortran code and based on finite volume method and second order time discretization. We use the simple algorithm to couple velocity and pressure, and we use block structural grids. Of course, FASTES can use it for FSI. For FSI applications, we extend our program to arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian framework, and we fulfill the space conservation law and implement some remission techniques like algebraic methods or elliptic approach. With these new features, FASTES was used the first time for the partitional FSI approach in 2006 by Professor Chef. In this coupling, in this first idea, FASTES was a fluid solver, FIF, the uh, structural software, and MPCCI was used to map the information between different grids and shared information. Behind of this idea, we have this algorithm. FASTES computed the fluid, uh, the fluid field after that the forces were determined and sent through MPCCI to FIF. After that, we take these forces like uh, boundary conditions, calculate the deformation of the structure, and send again to FASTES through MPCCI. In 2006, MPCCI was only used for communication and mapping, and the control of the FSI loop was within FASTES. And the extrapolation and under relaxation to accelerate the coupling was also implemented in FASTES. This idea was working for many years, until 2013, when some changes in MPCCI make difficult our coupling, and we experimented many problems. And we decided to change from MPCCI to precise. And our first idea in this time, in 2013, was basically change the AP APIs from MPCCI to the equivalent from precise and continue with the simulations. And I think, in my point of view, this, this was the, the mistake that we did, and was the responsible of my bad simulations, because the perspective of idea, the precise, is different from MPCCI. For example, for precise, it's not necessary to do this FSI loop control within the program. And other part is the extrapolation and under relaxation was a difficult part to implement in our program, but now it's not more necessary because it's part of precise. Anyway, I was using this algorithm for more or less one year, and I experimented many problems. Just recap the problem. I was using fastest FIF, decoupling was with precise, 
our all other adapters used the libraries from Precise, but the structure was remaining the same as for MPCCI. With this type of combination, obviously, my results was far away from the reference. And this was the motivation to change our mind, change our idea, and begin to uh, start again. Our first part was uh, thinking only in fastest because we are developer of fastest, and we decided to rebuild the adapter more or less from scratch. But for the fifth uh, part, for the uh, structural part, we are not uh, experts, we are user for the structural part, therefore we decided to change with uh, Calculix because it has official, ad uh, official adapter. Now, in the second part of my talk, I am going to concentrate only what is the way to build an uh, adapter for the fluid part, for fastest. Because with this new adapter, we have a very good results that we can also experiment if you change your ideas. I, in my point of view, I think that from the user point of view, basically make adapter is four steps. The first step is preparing your fluid solver. The second, implementing the adapter. After that, validate and testing them. I am going to start with preparing your fluid solver. When this concept, I think that is a little abstract and say more than we want, because preparing your fluid solver is really understand very well the structure of your program. I think that it's not necessary that you would know every part, but basically you need to distinguish three parts in your program. The initializations and routines, the calculations, where is the time loop calculations, and the finalization of routines. When you locate this part in your program, you can concentrate them in the time loop. Because in this time loop subroutine, or in this part of your program, is the place that you need to modify to implement the adapter. I consider that a uh, natural way is make easy the, the changes. For this reason, we decided to simplify our program and divide this time loop in three parts. I think that independent of the methodology that you use, always you have three parts. Something that is made before the calculation, the calculation, and after the calculation. In our case, for fastest, before the calculation, we, uh, we set the initial guess values for the variables. After that, the calculation is the simple loop, and the last part of the calculation is set the new va uh, values for the variables and increase the time step. These three parts you need to find in your program. And for example, for us, we make blocks and subroutines with these three groups. And now for us, these uh, three blocks uh, called a start time step, compute fluid field, and end time step. I do this in order to simplify my structure and make it easy to implement after that the adapter. I know that the idea is no modify your code. But if you don't understand and or the structure is not clear, maybe it's difficult to implement the uh, adapter. Okay, I think that if you have um, maybe in your way a simplification version of your program, you can continue. Now it's time to implement the adapter. For implementing the adapter, when you are a developer, the first uh, uh, point is define which type of a structure do you want. For example, the direct modifications, or a, a class of adapter, or call uh, functionalities. In the first uh, adapter that we have, we have direct modifications, but we experimented that it's not a very good idea because you have a lot of things in some parts of your program, and it's very difficult after that localize, uh, localize and make, for example, maintenance uh, in the program. Therefore, we decide the adapter class because we want to have everything from precise in only one part of the program and make easy to check mistakes. Therefore, we take this idea on in Fortran code. This idea is a module, and our module looks like 
this uh, structure, basically we have five subroutines. In the first is we establish communication. The name is init precise. The second is precise and steady FMG. We manage the time step loop and the FSI loop within this subroutine. The third uh, is the de uh, depth pre precise. We define the interfaces for the coupling. And the last two, read precise and write precise, basically call the APIs from precise to send and receive information. Now I am going to concentrate only in the two fears because I think that is most interesting for us. Initialization precise. Basically, in your program, you need to implement in this established communication part. Here, for example, you have the precise create, and with this uh, API, you establish the name of the configuration file that you want to share with precise, and also you give some information about your, your code. After that, the get data and get data ID or get mesh ID is used to mm, give names your meshes and also your data. For example, in Fastest, we have two meshes. The first is fluid knot. There are the, po uh, the points are located in each corner of the interface elements and fluid center. The first uh, mesh is used for displacement, and the second mesh is used for uh, send forces. When you have this uh, idea clear, you have the communication, you have the information about your grids, the next step is build the, the coupling. There are two options. The first is explicit and implicit, for, but for us, we think that it's more useful to implement the implicit for our test cases. To implement this implicit coupling, in this part, it's important to return your program. Um, look this very easy uh, structure because, for example, in our case, we base in this function and, for example, we made a copy and now this function for us is the precise and steady FMG and uh, it will manage the time step cycle and the FSI cycle in our program. In this subroutine, for precise, it's not necessary that we do this type of control for the time step. The do while cycle, we eliminate this cycle and replace for the equivalent in precise ongoing. Precise ongoing, manage the time step of your loop. For this part, we need to send every time your time step and read the variable ongoing. When you have this time step uh, loop that you can only in this part test your program that works or no, after that we you can implement the FSI loop. This is controlled with the ri uh, right checkpoints and red checkpoints. For these two parts, it's necessary that you know what is the start time step things, what is the end time step, because Right checkpoints and red checkpoints work like a conditionals. Only if the time step is new, you need to do this start time step. And only if this time step achieves the convergence, you need to do the end time step. In other ways, you make the internal calculation. Obviously, computer fluid field is not only the par uh, is not only necessary, and we need to implement it the FSI subroutines, like a read displacement. After that, you can apply some methodologies for grid deformation. For example, hmm, transfinite interpolation or elliptic approach. Then you compute in this, uh, in this state of the grid, you compute the fluid field. After that, you need to determine the forces and finally set the information to precise. All these algorithms, is encapsulated in precise and steady FMG. Now I am going to give you a, a small overview of our approach. Basically, our program is divided in three parts, initialization, calculation, and finalization. In the initialization part, we need to call init precise. That means that you need to establish communication with precise and send the information about the grids that you need to use and the data that we, 
you want to share with Precise. After that, the program decide if the case is FSI or no. In the case of FSI, we call our function precise and steady FMG, and we make the whole subroutines for FSI. In other ways, you make the uh, standard calculation. And in the finalization part, obviously, you need to finalize the, uh, the communication with precise. With this algorithm, now we are already we can do the validation. For the validation, I think that in our experience, we in the first step, we are very happy only when we see that the, the grid are moving. But it's not enough. Therefore, we suggested that we need to take some test cases with quantities, for example, the FSI tree, the cylinder with flap, because you can compare your displacement in the x and y direction and your forces, rack and leaf. And with these uh, quantities, you, you are sure that your algorithm works well. For example, now the red lines uh, are our present results and the black lines the reference. Now our results are very close from the reference and it's the time to apply our idea in other applications. This brings me to the last part of this topic, more testing. For this, more testing, remember that in FMB we are focusing modeling multiphysics. Therefore, we want to extend this FSI analysis to another applications. One of them, well now we have a project. Sorry. We have a project, for example, we have interesting to analyze what is the effect of the fluid extraction interaction in noise generation. For example, for a small drones, like here, for example, is the project is determine the acoustic simulation of the membrane airfoil. We have some experimental results, and in the simulation, uh, we can see the young study aspects that experiment the membrane airfoil. And after that, when we have this calculation, we can generate or calculate the aeroacoustic. Other interesting example for us is the fluid structure interaction involving free surface flows. Because it's important to improve the design of marine structures. Here we have the dam break uh, with ex uh, flexible obstacle test case. Basically, we have a multi-phase flow, air, water, and the impact of the water produce a uh, deformation of the structure. This is a preliminary result. This is our coarse grid, and we, we see that it's more or less near of the reference and experimental results. These two cases bring me to the end of my presentation, and I only want to give some uh, small important points. First, I think that if you want to begin or start a uh, adapter, um, to become an adapter, it's very important that you need to identify the structure of your program. You need to know very well the structure of your program, the first step. The second step is if you was using with another uh, application or another tool, you can determine, you need to determine which part is reused and which part you need to build again. And please, don't confuse like us. The precise APIs fr are different from the, pre uh, from the APIs from another tool. And finally, it's important implement and test, 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 test every part that you implement. Thank you very much. This was my presentation. I am very happy now if you have questions.
okay. Okay, first, the first question goes. <laughs> uh, for example, for us was definitely the validation test case because there are many groups that made before this test case and with different tools. And I think that a good validation is compared with other results. But in this case, for example, there are few experimental test cases in uh, for the full structure interaction with free surface flows, for example, there are experimental data. But uh, I think that is a very complex test case to begin. You need to uh, start with a more general test case, and in this case, we decided to take the FSI tree, and we experimented many mm, strange answers with this test case that we think that after to test the all this, um, all this part of the test case is enough to to say that now our results are agree with the reference. But obviously, it's no it's no that limitation only test this test case. You can use other test cases. But I think that in the literature there are three or four test cases that you have more quantities and you can compare them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the second question. Yeah, you need to test every part because I don't know, maybe your communication is okay, but your results, the quality of your results are not good. For example, for us, we don't have problems with the communication. We don't have problems with send or receive the information. Always were good, but our results bad. Yeah, obviously it's, it's a lot of work because uh, some parameters that you use for your course grid, after that you need to mm, again determine parameters for the second or the for the third grid, but no worries. <laughs> The structure, basically the whole structure, because for MPCCI the direction of the interchange uh, mm, information was uh, what in the other way, and first we change the order to send and receive information. Uh, second, we change the idea about the FSI loop, because uh, regarding my presentation I. Uh, I show you that the control of the FSI loop, for example, the the residuals or the convergence criteria, we evaluate directly in fastest. And now we don't have m more this part in our program. And we delete many parts that we don't use more. For example, we have uh, also uh, accelerating processing fastest that now we don't use more. Ah, ah, yeah. For this, for example, for FSI three, we calculate first only the fluid until the fluid was in a stable condition. That was more or less for us, I think, twenty seconds. Yeah, twenty seconds. And after that, we wait more or less two or three seconds in the FSI coupling. And in this moment, we begin the comparisons. Yeah, Cla. <laughs> the first slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Yeah, there is two cases more. The bending tower is one with uh, free flow, flow. There are experiments, and there are other that is for that is for compressible uh, flow. Is a pipe with a flow within, and you have expansion of the pipe. Up, but in our case, we don't cannot use because we we only calculate incompressible fluids. Okay. I think that this question can answer can better answer than me, Elena, that he works with turbulent fluids. Maybe if you can help him. Okay. You're welcome.